dinosaurs. That is one big pile of shit. That's about it. I don't even really know what else to say. I, I don't even really know why I'm doing this video other than for completionist sake, because while there is some stuff to talk about the new nerf Dino Squad Sting Smash, there's really not a whole lot to talk about, because one look at this blaster and a veteran nerfer will know exactly what they're going to get. But dinosaurs, I'm still confused. A lot of people were saying it's because there's a new Jurassic Park movie coming out. Dinosaurs were really popular in the 90s. I guess they've always been kind of popular in some respect, because who doesn't like big, monstrous, spiky, sharp, dangerous, reptile... Like, wasn't there like a bunch of science that came out? Like dinosaurs were like chickens and feathered and weird instead of scaly monstrosity. Like my whole canon lore with dinosaurs has been completely turned on its head since I was a kid. We're talking about a nerf Dino Squad stake us I don't even know what it did. There is anger in this blaster, and that's the only reason I want to talk about it. What do you get when you pick up the Nerf Dino Squad Stega Smash? Well, you get yourself a single shot pullback action Night Finder, or to you newer nerfers, Fire Strike style Nerf Blaster. The package features some pretty interesting art and the aesthetic of the blaster with its dark blue, bright silver, orange, and pearly white aesthetics gives it some of the most color separation we've ever seen on a Nerf Blaster yet. And because it's based off of a dinosaur, you get all sorts of crazy cool different texture effects on the actual plastic itself. The dark blue pieces of the blaster look like scales. The orange pieces are not only shiny and glossy, but also have places of a matte finish as well. And then there's the big white spines on the top that give it the Stego Smash name based off the Stegosaurus. And these are a soft rubbery plastic. They are pointy and they do kind of hurt and they don't flex as much as you would expect them to, but still, they're pretty safe all things considered. The grip features a reptile skin finish and there's kind of a small knobby grip guard. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the grip on the Stega Smash is not exactly awesome. It is really small, even for somebody like me, but hate to say it, looks like Nerf is starting to make all their grips pretty much for people with small hands like me. And I'll take it because I don't have big hands and this does fit me. But I, if you have slightly bigger hands than me, this thing is not going to fit whatsoever. Good for kids, bad for pretty much everybody else. The back of the box shows off the Nerf Tricera Blast, a blaster I have already reviewed that you can check out in the card in the top right corner. Just click the little eye icon showing up right about now. And the Rex Rampage, which you should get subscribed because we're gonna be looking at that very soon. And honestly, the Rex Rampage looks like the best blaster of the entire lot. Other than that, you've got a trigger. You've got a weird talon-shaped pullback mechanism. I mean, this is basically a fire strike. It is a single-shot pullback action blaster. There's no kind of hidden gimmick or anything with this one, unfortunately. And five darts with four dart storage located under the barrel, and you must reload the blaster every single time you fire it by stuffing a dart down the barrel. I should note this priming mechanism is kind of awesome. I do like the shape of it. I... I guess it's not like the most tactical shape ever, but you can really easy pull back on it. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. It looks awesome, but that's about everything that the Stega Smash is going to give you. The Stega, the Stega Smash's performance is middling. You're going to get anywhere from low to mid 60s to low 70s. What you would expect from a blaster of this size. And because it's using the standard Nerf Elite dart, you're not gonna get any bonuses to accuracy, although that lack of accuracy, if the dart does curve upward, can give you some pretty impressive range, all things considered. Fire rate is what you would expect. There is no device on the front of this to kind of guide darts in. You will pull back the blaster, shove a dart in, 
fire and then pull a new dart out, fire. And then when you were out of foam darts, you could very easily pull them out of the dump pouch, refill the front of this thing, which the dart storage at the front is exceptionally tight. It is actually dart damaging tight. So while you can use it and it's not going to lose the dart stored up here, I wouldn't recommend it for any kind of long-term storage. In fact, it's so tight, I don't even see the point of using it at all. It is just going to destroy your darts. And while that does give you a significantly quicker reload, it's just not worth it for how tight these barrels are. You're gonna damage your dart every single time you put it in. I. I do not know why it is so bad on the Stega Smash. And it is a rather comfortable blaster and the performance is okay. It's not gonna blow you away or anything like that, but if you had to run a single shot dinosaur themed blaster, well, Zuru has you probably beat there. But if you like the design and the ergonomics of the Stega Smash and you were using it in a stock nerf battle and you had to use this exact one, I honestly can't fault it for that. What I can fault it for is pretty much everything else because this is one of the worst blasters to try to disassemble ever. Obviously, you can tell by the fact that mine is completely unharmed that I have not done it. But my buddy Buff Daddy Nerf, who runs Blaster Hub, did pull his apart and found out that not only is this thing glued together and clipped together because there's basically three screws holding the very front of the blaster on and nothing in the actual mechanism, but they did something that we have not actually seen since Boomco. This blaster is pinned together, which means that you basically cannot take this thing apart without destroying it. Why? I have no idea. I guess it was worth saving a couple of extra screws back here. And to be perfectly honest, the back end of this blaster is really thin. If they wanted to shove screws or something in there, that could have ran into a problem with the actual durability. It feels really solid, doesn't creak or flex or anything in my hand, but was that worth it? Well, to a Hasbro executive who probably saved three cents per blaster on some metal screws with just a couple of metal pins or one metal pin, I can't remember exactly how many. Sure, why not? But for all of us who maybe wanted a more higher powered and more capable dinosaur themed blaster, well, you're out of luck because it's gonna be one of those that's almost impossible to mod. And even if you take the time to mod it, what exactly is the point? At $10, if you're looking for a competitive blaster, you can find much better. However, it is cool looking, it is comfortable. I technically, for a stock blaster, cannot find any fault with it whatsoever. And the color separation and the design of it will appeal to people. So I'm sorry this is gonna be one of the most boring reviews ever. I just had to get out of the fact that you can't mod this thing. I almost didn't even wanna do a video on it, but I paid $10 for it. So please hit that like button so I can hopefully recoup my investment on this <sighs> dinosaur thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm already pretty burnt out of the dinosaur aesthetic, but we still have one more to take a look at, which is of course the Rex Rampage, a motorized blaster that should be vaguely more interesting. At least it looks a lot more interesting. We'll be taking a look at that next time. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Walcoma7, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You got